Welcome to this video and presentation of how 21st century technology meets ancient stone structures at the Manitou Hashanash Preserve located in Hopkinton, Rhode Island. The video you are about to see is cutting edge technology combining 3D LiDAR scanning and mapping with an overlay of ARC GIS. In November of 2020, we had the opportunity to scan two one-acre parcels at the Hash and Ash Preserve for the New England Antiquities Research Association and the Hopkinton Land Trust. One of the unique things about a point cloud is that you can see through it. Um, and so as I maneuver this, you know, you're, you're looking at a wooded site. And this is what the site looked like when we were out there. You know, here's a stone wall and trees. But what's great about the software is after I capture things, I can manipulate it and do a whole bunch of, of different uh, processing with it. But the most important thing that I can do is I can turn the trees off. So for this project, what we were asked to do was to scan two one-acre parcels. And the parcel here on the right, upper right is called the upper or eastern parcel. And on the left is the lower or the western parcel. And the link between was just the walking path that I used um, to get from one to the other. And so the, the typical LiDAR captures everything as I walk, as I mentioned. But by turning the trees off, by classifying the trees and turning the trees off, we can see the landscape in a manner that's not possible today because of all the trees. And so each of these stone piles, stone structures, are part of the, the research to scan this and to create the 3D digital twin, the 3D model of what was being viewed. So in addition to the scanning, I worked with Eva to um, identify six locations where I wanted GPS points. And so that enabled me to use that data to register my scan to real world coordinates. And if you look at the lower left hand corner of the screen, the green arrow and the red arrow, with the green arrow going straight up on the screen, the, uh, the scan is uh, registered to, to do north and, and east. It's registered to the compass rows. So as I turn this, you can now see the blue arrow and that's the third dimension. So in addition to that work, I was asked to um, give a annotations, numbers to each of the stone piles that in order to do, to add these numbers to each of these features, I, I relied on my LIDAR, but I relied on their series of photographs for each of these features and also the GPS points. So if you look down here in the bottom part of my screen, this is the X number, the Y number, and the Z number. So if I click here at the 274, you'll see the numbers change. And if I click on feature 269, you'll see the numbers change. So one of the reasons why I chose this software is because it allows me to use LiDAR data from any different type of source. But one of the things the software can do for me very quickly is to create cross sections. And I'm a historical landscape architect by training. And to do what I just did in three seconds would take me a couple of hours. And if I put the trees back on, that's what that cross section looks like. And we can do cross sections and plan views. Uh, 
Another thing that's really interesting with this software is I can change the way that I view it. And if I change my background here from a white to a black, and I change my ground color from, uh, sorry, if I change my view from color by intensity to color by class, now we can see um, the ground surface with the stone structures, but I've classified the stone walls in red. So if I back out, you can see the stone walls that exist on the site. But I've also classified some other uh, unique stones here. A little one on top of this large boulder with a rock outcropping with a, a stone structure here. One here that's a pretty pointed rock. Another one here that's pretty pointed. Down here, this one is, is very unique. And if I isolate it, I can show you why I think it's unique. It's got the profile of a human. So again, keep in mind the scanner has a, an accuracy of one to three centimeters. So the details are not as crisp as a photograph. However, I captured each of these two one acre parcels in about an hour and a half. And uh, you just can't beat that with the type of technology that we're using. Oops. So when we look at the, uh, the stone structures, one of the things that we come across quite often, stone effigies. And this east-west wall is discussed and presented as a serpent, a stone serpent. And you can see how it curvilinear like a, like a serpent with the head being here. We can take a look at it in a very unique manner here. So I've been involved with these types of stone landscapes for nearly two years now. And before my introduction in April of 2019, I did not know these existed. I grew up in the Hudson Valley and these were uh, Hudson Valley of New York, and these were just not discussed in school. And I live pretty close to a lot of these structures. But one of the things I wanted to point out here one of my clients, and who is now a good friend, has a lot of stone walls on her site. And she's presented to me and shown me that the undulations in these stone walls are purposeful. Yes, some of them may have some tree damage. But she said, if you look at the low areas and at the high areas and crouch down and look off into the distance, you're going to see a relationship. So the deal is, which side of the wall do you look at? Well, you know, you don't know until you look. And if I unhide this and rotate this down, see that unique green stone that I highlighted earlier? So whether this is purposeful or accidental, you know, we really don't know. But we do know that this is an a north-south alignment. The serpent wall is a due east and west alignment. One of the other things I can do with the software is I can create polylines. And I added some here for to show you some potential alignments. So the yellow line is the one we were just looking at. And if we look at the serpent wall, So it connects from the high point on this stone structure directly through the serpent wall off into this stone structure in the distance. And today, while I was getting ready for this, 
I said, well, let me just see what else I might be able to find here. I find a lot of boulders that are set one next to each other. And if you look between, you may see some alignments or sunrise, sunset. But this double boulder, this double boulder leads right to this standing stone at the top of this, this wall here. And again, I can't tell you if it means anything. It's just, it's just what I'm noticing as I, as I look at the scan and, and try to understand what's going on. And then another alignment down here through this wall. We'll isolate this wall so I can just show it to you. Again, you, you see the undulations of the wall. And if we go from the low point to that human profile and look at the route between the two, it's almost the only route that there are no stones that you'd have to climb over in order to get from one area to another. And again, I can't tell you if that's purposeful or accidental or if I found something that's meaningful. You know, we just don't know. We, I just don't know. So again, just show you what the structures look like, the sites look like with the trees on. Very dense, very difficult to see anything. You know, with all the rocks, it's very difficult to walk around. But because of the LIDAR and the software, we're actually able to make it readable and easily to, to uh, investigate and research. Eva Givovic, GIS specialist and a member of the Ceremonial Landscapes Research Group, provided support for our work by uh, gathering GPS points for six specifically located stones so that we could geo-reference our LIDAR scan to real-world points. And Eva also um, did additional work to upload our LIDAR data into ArcGIS. And this photograph shows that image and it's the first time I've seen our LIDAR on uh, or in GIS uh, overlaid on a digital terrain model which Eva did using Rhode Island's GIS LIDAR data. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a special opportunity for us to bring our high-tech technology into such an ancient landscape covered with thousands of sacred and religious stone structures. I'd like to take a, an opportunity here to thank NERA and the Hopkinton Land Trust for the opportunity to do this work and the collaboration that Eva brought to the table to help us with the, the GPS points and also her additional work with ArcGIS. I hope you enjoyed the video. There will be more in the future. Thank you.